hello everyone. I'm Oscar Terrazas, America's talent marketing lead. But most importantly, I will be your host for the day. I hope everyone is having a great day. I know there are people connecting from different parts of the world. So to all of you, I'll go with have a good, I hope you're having a good day. First, let's do some housekeeping and, and, and so, so, so we can start, get started with the content. Uh, this is a safe space. Harassment or bad behavior uh, of any kind won't be tolerated. We want everyone to feel safe and open to participate and discuss important matters. Feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A feature. We will try to address them, all of them at the end of the talk. Uh, and have fun. Our webinar are for our ways for us to give our two cents into our, this virtual world. So try to relax, get to know our panelists, and and get also get to know their point of view and share it yourself. Well, there will there are there are features in, enabled here uh, at Zoom for you to do that. It's always important to get to know each other. So. If, if there aren't anything else that we should be covering, let's get this started and go, let's directly to our agenda. Uh, let's talk about, we will be talking about, like, I will, I will just take a few minutes and also in order for let more people to connect, uh, 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 we will talk about Andala. We will be introducing our panelists as well. Uh, and then we can go full on the content uh, and, and have some time for a Q&A at the end if there are some questions. Hello, Varun, uh, everyone, like in the chat, like, like I told you, the chat, the chat is enabled, so use it, like feel free to use it. So let's talk about Andela. Andela is a talent marketplace that connect companies with better remote technologies in emerging markets. It, it was founded in 2014. Uh, we, we've, 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 we have managed to, to raise over $381 million uh, uh, of venture capital that makes us the, the, first, uh, the first unicorn in the space or of, of, of the talent space. Uh, we have helped more than 80,000 uh, software engineers connect with more than 200 companies. Some of our investors have trust in our vision uh, of, of, connecting, of, of, of helping connecting uh, uh, companies with uh, the talent everywhere. Our SoftBank more recently, the Sean Zuckerberg Initiative, Google Ventures, Spark Capital and SV Generation. So, uh, as part of our mission, like we told, like uh, uh, we 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 want to help people to connect with these amazing opportunities. So, here are some of our featured clients and partnerships that we have. Like we have companies like GitHub, Remitly, Cloudflare, the BBC, Coursera, but also we have some learning partners like Google, Facebook, Kodasi, Pluralsight, and Open Classroom. Together, we want uh, we want to to accomplish our mission, which is like we believe in that brilliance is evenly distributed. Opportunities are not. Our mission is to connect brilliance with opportunities, irrespective of race, gender, of geography. And for that, for the talent, we offer long-term opportunities with top global companies, access to a global talent community, compensation and career coaching and financial and professional flexibility. For our clients, we are offering as well as quality, to, quality talent uh, and, and without the need of going to multiple round of interviews, a speed and efficiency in onboarding, we also help on that, manageable cost, but most importantly, talent available in your time zone, and the, the possibility to work with diverse talent from Africa, Latin America, and Europe. <clears throat> the engineer from our network get a long-term job. It's uh, an average engineer stays on engagement for over 18 months. These engagements are full-time. So we, we are looking engineers that are willing to work a minimum of 40 hours per week alongside your current engineering team. And this talent is fully integrated. The, 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 we, we look we, the, we, we look that uh, the, our, the talent gets at least a five or more hour time zone labs. And the, the, the engineers work directly on the company's slacks. They participate in the calls and also well works their company's slack. Uh, and just I, I just want to uh, talk a bit about our assessment process. Uh, as as global as we are, we need to uh, talk about the English proficiency. We need to get to know 
how uh, capable are you to, 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 to communicate with other people in, in, in different languages. We will also uh, have to uh, uh, assess your technical expertise and soft skills in order to present a better, a better, the better picture of you to the to the to the to the job opportunities. And we also use humans to help you create a better profile, so so you can you can you you, you get a consultative consultative review of your past experience to present your better your better you to the opportunities that you can get. And well. Just, uh, I, I invite you all to go to andela.com, uh, go to the engineering part and join the, 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 the Andela and Talent Network for getting the, your, your, your next professional opportunity. And with that said, let's talk about with two Andelas. Uh, I will, I will, I'm very happy to have uh, Joao and Rafael with me. I will take some time to introduce both of them. Uh, Joao is uh, uh, based in Santos in Brazil. Uh, is a software engineer for Foursquare. He has a passion for learning and trying new things. Uh, John started his career path by designing websites for friends and small, a small business in his neighborhood. In his spare time, John likes to help other developers to boost their careers by sharing content and mentoring. He's married and has two sons. And I would love for you all to tell us about his community uh, uh, and, and invite you all over at the end of the talk about it. Uh, Rafael Enrique is a computer vision engineer. He's experienced in data science, he's experienced in machine learning, and also he has experience in biometrics. Uh, with a master's degree in computer science, Rafael previous projects range from insurance pricing uh, to face analysts and to newborn fingerprint, which I think is super interesting. Uh, uh, and after a successful placement through Andala, Rafael now works for Logitech. Outside of work, he's developing his own project involving mobile pro, uh, computer vision, which we would love to hear more about it. And he enjoys yoga, tennis, and you know, playing some music and bass and guitar. With that said, let's just go with the content. Like, let's let's. I I I, I did this quick introduction, Rafa and Joao. So if you can just start by uh, uh, telling a bit more that I didn't cover, you think it's important for us to get to know better, please just tell. And if not, let's just go with the great software, like, like with the question, like are great software developers 10x faster than the rest? Who wants to start? Well, uh, I can start with this one. And uh, thank you for this great introduction. Uh, I'm good. Uh, I'm good with that. Uh, so um, I will jump directly to the content. So this question, uh it's very tricky and uh everyone must be thinking about it. wow what a clickbait was that right because uh 10 times faster is something very uh, it's a very large number but um after the, after thinking a lot of, of about this question i believe that that's this can be true if you think about um about a little further uh, what does that really means so let's explain a bit more so coding faster do, does not really mean delivering results faster so uh, i can only think one place that coding really fast is useful and uh, this is the acm program contest and this is the, the place where you get more points when you deliver your code faster but uh, after some context take a look into the resulting code so yeah the the champions of the context might have the algorithms to work on extreme cases etc however if you try to read their code uh, is it at least readable probably not they are they were doing some very extreme programming and uh, very few people could, could be able to read this kind of code. So a month later, probably neither the, the developer would be able to understand what he did on the context. So we could say that the programmer was really fast at this moment, but uh, he was not very productive because uh, his code will, will um, we were resulting a lot of hadashes to someone else later. And um, let's go to the other side. So 
Fair programmer take a very long time to do some code. Uh, he's probably is not being very productive as well. Um, think about someone doing some web service using C programming language. It's very hardcore. And uh, he's also doing that, uh, trying to deliver these web service in a self-hosted server and uh, well, trying to customize every little detail. And uh, he could deliver probably the same result using Python in a cloud's environment using a fraction of the time. So sure, the C web server probably is blazing fast, but uh, was it really necessary to optimize this, this web service this way? So what I'm trying to, to say here is what is, most important is to reach an equilibrium on speed of delivery, code optimization, and maintainability. So when you get those three, you are getting the most um, the, the most productive environment. And uh, great developers, I believe great developers are the one that can think about trade-offs on different technologies and choose the the solution that bet fits better the momentum of the company. Okay, so from one company to another, solutions might might be better to, to be different. And uh, this equilibrium must be aligned with the company momentum. And uh, thinking this way, perhaps we could uh, see about more than times the increase of productivity working with the right set of tools. And uh, of course, thinking on the long run on this. And that's my thought. Uh, I have to say, I don't have a guitar now, but I, I know how to play it too. And I'm planning to have a new guitar and we can share our free time hobbies and learning music made me think a lot about productivity because there is a myth about the fast guitar player uh, that one that can make with his fingers and you think oh he's a guitar god my god he's amazing but he only does that it's not and it's not every time art real art sometimes it's just to show off not, not a knowledge about music and it, it's the same myth that uh, we have in, in computing uh, we have a problem of a lot of bosses thinking that if you make a lot of of rest call, calls uh, faster in, then you are a good programmer because you are producing a lot of, of stuff that can break faster too. And we, uh, I, I always believe that the, we should think about and make questions seven times longer than the time we, we take coding because it's more important. Make sure it's going to keep... Uh, standing up and working uh, then make sure it's going to be launched faster not that we should take uh, years uh, only planning but uh, make it uh, like in hours is is a myth make, make stuff work as the, an, an mvp sell an mvp is not is not a good business uh, and uh, I may be making a lot of digressions uh, about the different points of view, but uh, I think coding 10 times faster is still a good clickbait after all. Sure, it all just like makes sense because you, we can always get the terms uh, confused, right? At the end of the day, <clears throat> what we want to do is to deliver software that works, right? 
it's 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 not a matter like 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 I think the analogy that you just made, uh, Joao, it's pretty straightforward. In terms of like, not always the best guitar player is the one that's, that plays faster, right? Because you need to play. It's a matter of rhythm instead of velocity, right? So uh, there's an analogy that I, that I, that is always used in the productivity world, which is like you always have to adjust or go at the same velocity than the a slower uh, member of the team, right? Because if not, then you will be losing, <clears throat> you will be losing momentum and you will be losing a lot of energy when uh, when the team has to uh, stop waiting for the other parts of the of, of the team. So I I, I think that. Uh, uh, that if you understand what are the metrics and what are what are the 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 the, the key measurements of success, velocity is not an is not as important as you may be thinking, as as is the output of the work that you've been doing. So so what what do you what do you think uh, about like is there a measure for productivity? How how, how would you measure it? You want to want to be the first? This one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a very very complex question, right? Um, I think you cannot measure measure productivity using only one single metric. That's the the matter. The a big question you can use the time okay it's it's fair if you take the time consider the time you you are taking to to deliver something but you need to measure what is accomplished in that time and how trustful is your work in in that time uh, maybe time Time, it's, it shouldn't be a, a function of time after all. And you need to measure how much issues are raising uh, after you, you launched your, launch it, your, you deployed your work. And it's a matter for every, every area where you, you can work. You, you cannot just think you are productive because you sell, 200,000 breads before 10 o'clock and everybody comes back to say your bread is terrible. Your, your bread came with a, a hair inside it. It's, it wouldn't be productive. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, Rafa, but uh, I think it's, 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 it's a matter of how you, it's, it's a matter like uh, in, in the stage of the organization that you're working on, right? Like, like if you if you want, like, I, I don't know if you remember that, the, well, I'm sure you remember that, but the, the Facebook motto of uh, move fast and break things, yeah. right? So <laughs> I, I think that's a great analogy. And at the end of the day, they ended up, you know, uh, changing that motto and try, trying to keep the speed, the speed or the, or the velocity part integrated into the motto, but they were also looking for for the part in which also delivering great stuff, right? Like not just delivering stuff for delivering. I I, I think that's one of the of the of, of the best ways to portray that productivity is not speed, but it, productivity ended up being just like more than than just a uh, 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 writing very fast uh, coding or or delivering. Or doing a lot of pushes on on on, on your GitHub, right? I, I don't know if you have any any thoughts of that, but uh, I don't know, Rafa. What do you think uh, about it in terms of like the velocity and 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 in terms of also like productivity? Yeah. Well, um, I think that productivity is about delivering results, but uh, it's also it's consequence for a company, right? Uh, everyone is working for a company. It's to increase profits, and uh, profits are measured in the long run. Because uh, if if you choose a very short window time, well, developers are just costs, and uh, 
what we can deliver in one week doesn't does not matter for the company. Uh, they yeah. need, they usually use a long run of time, probably a year. And uh, so the questions that remains in how long is this? So that's upon the the company you are working for. So if you if you are talking about startups, this long run is not that long. Startups does not have much money to to work on. Usually, they are trying to to get investors, and to get an investor, you have to have an MVP very fast. And uh, this is one kind of context. And uh, the other one is established companies, big companies that probably they are focused more on stability than putting something on market that could break and. Uh, and uh, make the, the the name of the company looks bad. So uh, those are different contexts, and uh, you need to be aware where are you placed. And uh, from this point, what matters is to help your company achieving its goals. So you are being very productive if you are helping your company to achieve its goals, given the current context of the company. And um, well, these measure today, I think measure is being a thing of the agile uh, manifesto. I'm not an agile expert, right? But uh, I'm risk to say that agile methodologies are being employed a lot to measure and increase productivity of the teams. And uh, from what John said about uh, MVP and uh, doing a lot of tasks, etc. Well, Agile says, I believe most Agile methodologies says that uh, do the necessary tasks to achieve the company goal and not do as many tasks as you can do in this short time of window. So uh, doing the right thing to achieve the company goal is the most important thing. And uh, it's the one that will help you to be measured as uh, being very productive and uh, not doing a lot of tickets and uh, putting a lot of code into GitHub. Yeah, it was a, a bit complex, but. Uh... So also, uh, uh, thank you for your question. He's asking like, how can someone measure his own productivity? And 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 I think like you, you answered that part like like uh, on your on your in your previous interaction here, in which you are telling like you're being productive when you are helping the company achieve its goals, like achieve uh, where they want to go. Uh, it's there. There will be always uh, uh, some respect on time because you know the company for achieving its goal has to survive <laughs> with the money that they have. So if, if you take a lot of time for, for delivering great software, you will end up dead because you, you will run out of money, right? So, so I, I, I think that it's a matter like, would you, would you feel, would you agree on saying that, and in order to answer on Sola, like you can measure productivity by delivering on time the features required for the company to get to the next stage, whether if it's a startup to survive, but also if it's a big company to 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 you know to service their their customers, how do you how do you, how, and to mark like this question answer and please Alusola follow up if we if we don't answer you. If your if your only measure is time is the deadlines, you are using a, a dangerous indicator because it only indicates that you are you are okay with the deadlines, just that, not that you are producing what is expected to be, to be deployed. That is, that is the, the single problem with the, the deadlines. It's not, not a bad thing, not a bad measure, but it's dangerous alone if you, if you don't have uh, the quality of what you are deploying alongside. And I would say for, for the, 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 the programmer alone uh, question, I am a programmer, how can I measure my own productivity? 
I I would advise you to take your your manager to measure you and ask people. In my experience, the best measure for my productivity was asking people for feedback. Ask my team, ask and my manager. I started to bug everybody about my 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 growing inside the team I am now. And it I started to feel better when I when I done that because they 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 not just gave me positive feedbacks about my my uh, what I was doing my work but they already they 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 gave me good advices too about keeping communicative keeping asking for feedback keeping making questions keeping keeping keep in touch because it, it's gonna be it's gonna be, make you more productive yeah, yeah. I, go ahead well uh, i would say that uh, i love the john answer because uh i really believe agile has something about uh constant feedback and uh at least on my past company I also had a lot of feedbacks and uh, this is very, very important to, to understand if you are going to achieve the company's goals, if you are coding in the correct, uh, in correct pace, etc. cetera. Because uh, again, uh, in a startup, usually you can do something less robust and uh, deliver faster. And uh, well, probably there are, 10 clients using it. So it's not that big deal on performance and uh, and the robustness, but uh, big companies always have a lot of clients and uh, you need to battle test things first. So uh, your manager probably know those things and uh, we provide you the correct, uh, the feedback if you are doing something that you should. Okay, if, if you are doing some code style that is not fit for the company and uh, it's the correct person to to ask about how you are going. Yeah, totally agree. And <clears throat> I hope that uh, that answered some of the question. There are all, uh, another question coming from, from uh, Firdaus, Hassan, uh, hi. Uh, it's, the, on the, it's the month of October and Tech Twitter is all about Hacktober Fest. And and feel free to just say no if you don't have you not have the answer because we didn't prepare for this question. But how do you advise an open source newbie to engage in it? Have you ever participated in Hacktoberfest or do you know about it? Yeah, I have participated uh, a long time ago, and uh, it's kind of fun. You just uh, go on projects that you like, probably. Most of the major um, open source projects will do tasks flagged as Hacktoberfest. And uh, if you are not, uh, well, uh, let's be honest, open source projects are very complex. So if you're trying to do something like, uh, ah, let's do some, let's fix this bug on KDE. Well, that, that's going to be hard. Uh, not every programmer are going to understand what's going on on this kind of project. But uh, they like the help on documentation stuff, doing some tutorials, doing things like that. So you can help open source projects uh, on the documentation side and uh, not only doing the hardcore uh, coding of those projects. Awesome. Joe, do you have any experience working, uh, participating in Hacktober or haven't you? I never contributed to that, but I, but I follow it closely to motivate my own community <laughs> to participate that, to that. Uh, I would say if you, if you are not very experienced in programming, you can still help, uh, help uh managing issues and with the documentations 
And there is a lot of non-coding work to do. If you think the language is not, you are not experienced with, with some language, but you are a fan of the project, you can help with that. We can participate, helping with no non-coding stuff too. And uh, I'd say, go ahead and try to make some PRs on the code too, even if you don't think you are a Batman coder on that project, because <laughs> you don't need to be a superhero. You need to just make your own contribution. The, it's it's very amazing, an amazing feeling when you when you send a contribution to something and you know you have it to to get something better with your own hands, even if it's not 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 a not a you are not holding a big meteor in your hands, but you are just making a small contribution. It's important. The words not made of the biggest ones. The words made of the smallest together, making small contributions and going together. Okay, I hope that uh, answers your questions, for those. And uh, like, uh, and Eliza just dropped on 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 our chat uh, uh, a blog that we just uh, that she actually uh, crafted for for about like October and how to engage with it. So I, I totally invite everyone to to go and take a look at it. But other than that, that I, I think like we covered uh, the the October part. So. Uh, there are some questions that I think we will be addressing a bit more uh, ahead, but I just want to wrap up this 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 uh, productivity topic to to move to the other part, like just by asking you, uh, uh, John, Joao, and Rafa, uh, can you just share like a couple of tips or or, or advice for junior mid junior software developers in order to being a better software developer from your experience or some or, or, or from your perspective as you a few years back that you would have loved to someone tell you like hey Joel, hey Rafa, you should do this instead of that and that would have saved you some trouble like in your software developer career because who, who wants to start with this one <clears throat> okay uh, go go okay. ahead um well, uh, the first tip I would like to give to myself when I was early academic was to do not try to do everything on C language. That's the demon of the languages. It's very <laughs> hardcore. There are a lot of things easier to do in this world. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and I, I stuck with the C language for a long time because of the kind of work I was doing. Um, well, uh, I started with computer vision right after I joined my my bachelor degree. So um, at the, that time, most uh, frameworks for computer vision was low level frameworks. So. And uh, if you try to do something on high level, everyone says, well, for computer vision, that's not going to work because uh, you get some performance issues, etc." But uh, yeah, uh, even despite all those things, I believe I should have tried to learn more different things earlier and uh, that would have helped me a lot um, when I was trying to get some job, etc., because uh, well, for academics doing hardcore programming, that uh, that's okay. But when you you are trying to become an engineer, it's very hard to find positions that require this kind of stuff. Usually, Python is enough for most of the tasks uh, that uh, exist in, in our world. So. Uh, and another thing that uh, I would try to, to give myself a tip is that, uh, well, when I started to work with computer vision, I believe that uh, I was about to be an academic 
and uh, I was very focused on trying to do some cutting at the research and publishing papers, etc. And uh, that's very hard thing to do. And uh, after after some time, I was poking with some new stacks, and uh, I started to see the data science world and uh, other things to do. Like I uh, studying web services, studying IoT, well, studying th different things, and I realized that I like more to be an engineer and uh, optimizing production environments than trying to do the cutting edge, edge research and publishing papers. Uh, in fact, I, I hate to publish papers. So <laughs> try different things. Uh, that's my, my measure tip is try different things and uh, do not stuck with the first thing that you learn. Uh, learning new programming language is not easy at the beginning, but uh, you are getting used to and uh, from time to time it gets easier to understand new languages and uh, at some point you will realize what fits you better and uh, working with really like, it's a big improvement for your productivity. Thank you. And <clears throat> Joao, uh, any, any tip for, for, for the audience? I would say, don't forget to drink water and sleep. <laughs> Don't put a lot of pressure to yourself. He, I had a boss that is it to, to make us stop talking about work, to go back to our computers to keep working because he just wanted us to keep our faces on the computer and thinking that was more productive because we were stealing him time and money when I when we was talking about the, the work to make it better and more productive and uh, I, I got some health problems pressing myself too much to to learn faster and make the next unicorn product myself and this is a, a fantasy you if you want to be a superhero you need to start having a lot of superheroes around you to be together superheroes not alone and not putting too much pressure to yourself and i got this advice even from my current scrum master uh, so don't lose the, the focus to what really matters your family matters your health matters and the goals of your company matters, not just making the next hundred lines of code faster. Yeah, it's, it's an archetypical uh, like point of view. Like if you wanna be like a great software developer, you, you need to eat a lot of Cheetos and you need to not sleep and, and code through, to, through the night. And that may fit someone. Like there are people that is more uh, productive during the night, but also make sure that you take <laughs> the right amount of sleep because then you, your head and your brain, which is uh, the most important organ uh, <laughs> in, your, in, your, in your body. And if you're a software developer, it's the most important thing that you have, like your brain, you need to take care of it. And I think it's an important uh, uh, message because it's not always too redundant to be telling that continue to drink water and to get through all of your sleep time. And thank you very much for that advice. And thank you Rafa for your advice, advice as well. So uh, I, want, I would like to, to take just like this last part of the content to, to, for you to tell us and our audience, what was your Andela's um, journey? How, how you got here? How you, how was your, 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 you know, like your, your journey through the scenes you started like, you know, applying, how, how was the screening process? And now, like now, how, how's the, the thing that you're doing? Are you excited? Is this have been of help for you? Uh, uh, if this has been a, a change in, in the way you, you, you do work? I don't know who wants to start with this one. 
um, interesting story that I, I stopped trying to work more than necessary and I started taking more time to update my LinkedIn profile. And then Andela found me. Mm -hmm. I heard of Andela on a podcast, but I, I never searched for Andela. Andela uh, got to me uh, and through a Brazilian company that got a partnership to them. Mm -hmm. And they said they are looking for Brazilian people. They are looking for more people. And I, I started to see that uh, actually the market is desperate for people everywhere to make the work because there, uh, there is more, more and more work to be done and more and more space to fill. And Andela helped me a lot to see that, to find out that um, there, there is a lot of care about people, make people more human and less less machinery to the to the companies more uh, uh more the feeling that you are really important uh i think that impacted me a lot on andela is that i i i started my onboarding getting a, a course about discrimination to be trained to avoid discrimination and combat discrimination when it's necessary, help people and uh, not be a perpetrator too. Uh, that was a lot of, of game change to me because I never imagined I would be on a company caring about that and making me aware, caring to make me conscious that I, I, I need to care about people and make people happy makes people more productive. That is very important to mention too. Rafa, how was your journey? Thank you. Thank you, Joe, for telling your story. Awesome story. Well, um, different from John, uh, I always get my LinkedIn uh, cutting edge. So every step I do, I update my profile because uh, if I learned that if you let a lot of things happen and then you go update your resume or LinkedIn, etc., you forget things and uh, it's it's kind of a boring task to do to update LinkedIn and uh, resume. So uh, it's easier to put every single step from time to time instead of <laughs> passing two years and uh, forgetting things. So yeah, for my case, Andela found me. I have never heard of Andela before joining. And uh, it was quite interesting because uh, oh, they sent me a, a message on LinkedIn and then I did some um, some talkings. Then I was talking directly with the manager on Logitech. And uh, well, um, I was happy, but uh, I was not very confident that uh, something was going to happen effectively. And uh, then I got the offer and uh, well, in about um, in less than a month, uh, I moved jobs. And uh, that freaked me out because uh, I was used to my stable job, uh, had an office, and uh, to one time to another, then I was uh, in need to open a company to work as a contractor, uh, figuring out how to, to get the money from USD to REIs, and uh, a lot of things to learn. and. Um, but uh, that's been great. Uh, after the the first uh, the first steps that uh, can freak you out, uh, everything goes smoothly, and uh, I believe that uh, the support team at Andela plays uh, a very big role here because uh, I got a lot of help from the community from the 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 managers at Andela and uh, 
also one of the things that I like the most is the constant feedbacks that I receive inside Andela. So uh, Logitech managers talks a lot with Andela managers and the Andela managers uh, gets us feedbacks. And uh, after receiving constant feedbacks that, uh, wow, you are doing a great job. Well, uh, that's got me very happy because uh, well, that's my first time in a big company and uh, I, I was afraid to fail it and uh, not deliver what uh, they were expecting for me. And uh, the reality is that big companies and small companies, they are very close to each other. Technology they are using are exactly the same. So there is no reason to, to be afraid of joining a big company or to being a contractor. In fact, being a contractor, they they treat me as an I am part of their company. They they do not uh, do anything like oh the, the, he's a contractor, uh, giving him the worst kind of jobs to do. That that's not the reality. They give me very challenging jobs uh, that uh, tasks that I love to do and uh, have a massive impact in, in our product. And uh, also they give me confidence to do the work uh, in my own way. So I, I find this amazing. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Rafa. So we are reaching, uh, we, we, I think we just made it through the content. Thank you very much for, uh, for, for all, for allow us to dig into your heads and your brains and uh, into your experiences and how you live it. Uh, uh, I, I, I think like I, I will just love for you to close, to wrap it up with a call to action, right? Like, and, and, and we talked about it. Like, uh, I know Joe that you run this uh, community uh, uh, that I, I think it will be great for you to invite people to join. And, and if there are any places in which people could follow, follow you or follow your community, that will be amazing. Uh, uh, my own community is mostly from Brazilian and Portuguese people. So if you want to learn Portuguese or you I want to. <laughs> you are already speaking that so you you can you can enter this community where i make a lot of of volunteering work to help beginners and everyone that want to change their career or improve their their skills it's called agencia gift in linkedin and there is the website agenciagift.github.io Yes, I didn't register the domain. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm super you, proud about it. You may even found a link to my calendar there to schedule a, a personal mm. talk to me if you want. Can you just uh, put in the chat uh, the the name of the of the of the of the of your community? No, because I'm lazy. I may put in the link. Oh, uh, awesome. Now. I, I'm I'm typing this now. Awesome, thank you, uh, Rafa. Any closing remark you wanna do while Joao is is typing very fast, like like a like you know Kiriani? Well, uh, I don't have a community to 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 put here, but uh, you can see. Feel free to reach me on LinkedIn, and uh, if you want to talk about um, anything from, I don't know, from the topics that we were talking about here, or about computer vision, if you are interested to to join this this amazing world of AI, well, feel free to reach me on any network that you reach, uh, you find me. Um, I don't mind. Uh, we can schedule a time. Awesome, awesome. Uh, okay, so yeah, yeah. Evan, uh, we're gonna go through the uh, Q and A part now. We have lots of questions, and we will try to to you know 
to address most of them. Some, some can be nested as the same question. So I, I, we will try to go through all of them. So uh, Babaji, the, I, I hope I pronounced it uh, correctly. Is there a difference between a software developer and a software engineer? Do you have a, do you think there's a difference? No. I don't think so. I don't think no, so. It's, it's also However, like, is it they also calling it programmers, right? Like. I think yeah. it's just more of a, 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 a matter of language in, uh, in, uh, than a matter of, of being something different. Like it's not like in data science, the difference between a data scientist and a data engineer, like there are differences right? between software developers yeah. aren't, right? If you yes, are in the data I... world, there, there are very strict differences, but uh, <laughs> for programmers, I don't think so. If you are a okay. developer, just enjoy your promotion. You are now an engineer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How can a beginner in programming become a product become productive in the process of learning, considering learning series of new things when it comes to coding? And that's a question coming from Beril uh, uh, Akinji. Again, eliminate the pressure to be fast and to learn a lot. Make it fun. Make it cause you believe it. Not just you, you, you want to learn a, a new language because it pay a lot for, for to work for mm. that. Uh, make it interesting. Make it uh, uh, in, in the time where you, you slept when you longer you needed. Uh, not, not, do not try to study a, a lot of hours a day. Because it will not make you, it can make you be bored and not learn a lot a day. Okay. Rafa, you have a, 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 an input on it? Or we just move to the next question. Well, um, love the answer. And uh, I would uh, only add that uh, try different things. So perhaps. Uh, another programming language will be more appealing for you and uh, try to, to also change context. So perhaps you are doing some web service and uh, you are getting bored, but uh, you tried something with the image processing and uh, you kind of love that. So try different things. And nobody asked me, but I will recommend you and I did it uh, take, there's a, there's a course, you know, I believe it's Coursera, uh, I'm not sure, but there's a, there's a, a, a mock named Learning How to Learn, right? So uh, it's very, I, I really recommend it to, to all of you. It's a, a, a scientific view on, on how we grown-ups learn, right? You know, there's a lot of, a lot of methodologies to, to, to learn, to, to teach, or to, or to teach how to teach to young, guy, to young students. But this, this one is more uh, addressed is more for people that is like well out of the college or even even for people during college. But the, the, the overall idea is they cover some topics around uh, how how to be be more productive and be more uh, uh, you know have mo most better intention when learning. Uh, and the course is like learning how to learn. Learn if you look, Google it, you will find that it's a free course and it's a very short one. I really recommend that one. So uh, we can we have we still have, have like four minutes. So I'll I'll try to to go through all of these questions. So some of the challenges that the startup often has is I think it's a very interesting question is is competing for talent. Oftentimes ending up with talents between mid level and junior level software engineers. How do you keep a balance between leveling up developers and delivering in a fast? Paced environment. That's a question coming from Akin Sola. Uh, I don't know, George. I, I think you can, you can, you, you have some experience, and I don't want to address this one. Like, how, how can you, like, you, you know, have a, keep a balance between teaching and help you helping your team to 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 raise to the level and delivering? Do you have experience with it? Oh, well, I think he's uh, having some problem. Rafa, uh, do you have an experience yeah. like working with startup, and, and can you address this question? Uh, that that's very hard. Uh, I believe most companies fail at uh, com uh, 
contracting junior developers. Most companies want only the seniors, but uh, it's very important to, to contract the juniors and uh, level up developers. It's always important to do that. And uh, well, uh, I think that uh, even a junior developer is able to deliver awesome results. Um, but uh, the major difference is junior developers have fewer skills, usually because he didn't have enough time to learn more skills. So if you focus, if these skills is correctly aligned with the, the startup goals, I don't see a problem to uh, on delivering results fast. And uh, with time, this junior can get more responsibilities and uh, this way learning new stuff. So probably to deliver the things that the startup needs, probably it, it's going to need a lot of juniors instead of a few seniors, but uh, each one learning from one another, everyone is going to level up uh, their skills. And uh, even though going to deliver fast. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Rafa, I hope that answered answer your question. Uh, Joao, uh, do you have a, 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 an input on it? Uh, I'd say that that's a good point to mention here. My experience uh, where I'm working now, I work for Foursquare, and I can say that is one of the most organized companies I, I saw, I worked on. And uh, the point is be organized. If you, if you need to, to measure correctly and make the juniors uh, to grow up and, and keep deploying stuff, you need to know what you are doing. And the only way is be organized. Keep uh, keep the tools updated. Keep the keep keep your Kanban panels updated. Keep your profile updated. Keep your notifications on Slack on, and and keep keep answering when they call you. Uh, and for the junior ones, I would say don't be afraid of making questions. The the problem is not. Is not when you say I don't know something. The problem is when people think you know and but you don't know something. And if you don't know something, you you are not in trouble. You just need to say I don't know that. I need help with that. And keep making questions because that's the advice I'm I'm getting from my own team every week. Every time I I talk. Uh, uh, to, to my managers, they say the same thing, keep making questions, keep talking to, to your team and asking for help when you need it. Thank you, uh, Joao. We still have two minutes. There are some questions related to Andela. I'm gonna, I'm gonna if, you, if you keep, uh, like we, we can just dismiss our, our host at the end because we want to be very mindful of your time. So uh, we will uh, get to the end of this and I can just uh, address the last questions for uh, uh, about uh, Andela. So, and just one, I, I think we will just have more time for one question, which is, I'm gonna just pick the one coming from Samuel Olusola. Some lessons on clean code suggest that one should see programming as communicating with other developers first and communicating with the community with the computer as second this is aimed at making sure that, that code base is continually maintainable and understandable what are your thoughts on this how can one reach a balance between writing clean code and delivering fast and with that we will that's that's the last question that we want to uh, uh, be handling today The clean code, okay. first, of, first of all, helps the tools you are using to to help you, because your code, your editor can can pre, predict what you are typing if you make it right. Uh, so you you have a lot of insight just looking to the code if it's readable. 
So uh, uh, we we had a problem about how to write the code uh, some decades ago because we needed to write the production version of the code and launch a, a JavaScript that was something between readable and fast in the machine. But nowadays we don't need that. We can write a readable code and document it right in the code uh, and let the, the faster version to the compilers, to the tools, to the machine. So I, I, I used to say to my disciples, do not make the work of a machine. If it's the work of a computer, don't do that. Let the work of the computer to the computer do. Okay. Uh, Rafa, do you have any input on it? Well, um, I think that's correct. And uh, and it, it it's more important for the code to be clean than you delivering it really fast because uh, I don't think that writing a great readable code is so much uh, slower than writing uh, poor documented code. So um, focus on the maintainability because delivering fast today um, can make you in trouble in a month from now. So if you, you get a code that is not very maintainable in a few months, probably you are going to, to need a lot of more time to understand what's going on instead of the time, uh, the, the time of writing this code clean. So it's cheaper to write the code clean in the long run. So focus on that. I believe the only, the only situation that your code will not be exactly clean and that's okay is when you are writing very performance code. And uh, this, this is uh, an exceptional case, probably in the gaming industry when you have to optimize something in assembly. And even though when they do that, usually there are a lot of documentation explaining exactly why this was so important to optimize it this way. So. Keep your code clean, always. Always. Well, Joao, Rafael, thank you very much for your uh, time here. We are three minutes of our time. And that's uh, because you created this amazing question for our speakers at the, at the answer. I'm so sad that we are, aren't able to address all of them since we, we, need to, we need to keep up with the schedule. We need to keep up with the schedule, but more content to come. Like uh, be like follow us on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, whatever you 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 follow or LinkedIn us uh, because we will be having uh, more content for you and for us to being able to connect with you in different levels. So, Rafa, Joao, thank you very much for your time again, and well, talk to you later. Bye, yeah, everyone. Thank you. Bye, bye, everyone. Bye. You. Thank you, Andela. Thank you. Bye.